Hey guys, it's Chris from Steeda, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about our Steeda two-piece rotors. Uh, we have Jamie here, our technician, race car driver, you name it, he does it all, um, to kind of tell us a little bit more about exactly how these are oriented on the car, what exactly the slots do in comparison to drilled rotors, and ultimately the vanes and how it works as an air pump and things like that. So Jamie, first off, which side is this, driver's side front or... Um, so driver's side front or passenger side front? Driver's side front. Driver's side front. And how do you know that? The direction that the vanes are, are curved in tells you which side they go on. So how exactly does this work? If you're looking at the driver's side front of the vehicle, the slots we'll get to in a second, but the main thing that determines the orientation of these rotors is not the slots it's it's not the, the it's not the external surface slots you see on the rotor face itself it's the actual veins that run inside the rotor they're what actually allows the rotor to cool properly by pulling air from the back side of the rotor in and then pulling it through the rotor itself to cool and as you can see from the view of the rotor they curve to the rear this is the like i said the left front and it's designed to pull the air through the rotor and out to the outside if you turn these backwards they're not going to be able to pull the air out of it effectively basically if you were a track event with these had them backwards they're going to get too hot you're going to overheat your brakes pretty quick because you're not pulling any air through the heat's going to go through your brake pads and heat up your brake fluid. So one thing I got confused about when you were explaining this to me, because um, honestly, prior to this, I, I, I thought it was all about the slots in the front. I was unaware that there's uh, straight cut veins versus directional veins and our rotors are directional veined. So it's not the air coming in and going out. It's actually a vacuum. It's sucking air in through the center and pushing it out through yes. the outside of the road. Yes, it's a big fan, essentially. It's just pulling air in from the backside, in through the center, in through the center of the rotor, and extracting it out through the veins to the outside. And that makes sense if you think about it um, with, uh, with cars, track cars, that whether you add brake cooling, you know, cooling ducts from the front of the vehicle, or they're built in like some of the Shelby or GT500, Mach, even the Mach 1 has them as well. Yeah, the, the, the Mach 1s have brake cooling ducts. Where it, it channels that air not to the outside of the rotor, it channels it right to the center. So those, that vacuum, that fan can do its job and cool the rotor, right? Yep, you're forcing the air in there so it makes it more efficient at how it pulls the air, pushes the air through the rotor. Now, let's talk about the slots. Um, on the surface of the rotor, what, is, what, is the, what are the slot's job? The slot's job are to degas the brake pad. As the brake pad starts to get hot, it releases gases uh, from the brake pad compounds, the binding compounds that actually hold the brake pad to the backing plate. And as it gets hot, those gases expand and they will get trapped between the surface of the pad and the rotor. The veins are to allow that gas to escape to keep a consistent pedal pressure. Um, and in turn, it cleans the surface of the pad, right? It can, yeah, it helps to keep the surface of the bat, pads clean because it gives the, uh, the brake dust a channel to escape by. But if you'll notice on most of these, the, the vein in it doesn't go all the way to the outer surface of the rotor. It stops short of both the inside and the outside. Uh, that's primarily just to keep the rotors from cracking. Gotcha. So are there any downsides to going with a slotted rotor for the street? Um, I mean, should, any, should people be aware of anything going with a slotted rotor? Uh, there's, there's really no downsides. Uh, for mo if it's just a normal street-driven car, uh, having the slots like that is mostly for cosmetic. Uh, the brake pads aren't going to get hot enough under normal driving to really start outgassing. That's more of a performance, track day, race type application than it is normal street driving car. Gotcha, and comparing these to a drilled rotor, what are some pros and cons going to drilled versus slotted or drilled and slotted? Um, for show cars, drilled rotors look great. Other than that, not so much. Uh, drilled rotors are prone to cracking because you have so many holes and so many edges created by those holes as the rotor heats and cools, it'll have a tendency to crack. 
Uh, it's not a matter of if they're going to crack, it's just a matter of when. So that's why we recommend going with the two-piece slotted rotor when it comes to those out there who are serious about track use. And the best part is street manners are pretty much the same. There's really no increased NVH or anything like that. Not to mention the weight savings you get of these rotors on top of the factory ones. Now, this is obviously a brand new rotor. Um, let's take a minute and show you guys what these two-piece rotors look like on 20,000 street miles. Yep. Countless autocrosses and 25 plus hours of track time um, on these rotors. Oh, by the way, and they've seen nothing but DTC 70 pads up front, which are pretty much the most aggressive pad we offer here at Cena.com. So here we have our Q350 EcoBoost. Um, one thing we upgraded pretty quickly on this car was the Brembo brakes off the GT Performance Package cars. Now, Jamie, we've got our DTC 70 pads here and two-piece rotors. Yep. Now, 20,000 street miles. I mean, these things have worn pretty darn well. Now, tell us a little bit about how you check on the wear of these two-piece rotors. Uh, it has a service limit as far as how much wear it can have before you need to replace them. But it's just simply a measurement of the inside and the outside of the rotor to determine how close you are to that service limit before they need to be replaced. Uh, it really doesn't have anything to do with the uh, degas veins that are in the rotor. It's more a matter of how much actual wear it has. And in terms of orientation, uh, the veins, just as a, as a visual reference, I know that we talked about the veins in between the two surfaces as the main tell of where these things get mounted on which side of the car, but looking at the outside, the face of the rotor, this is the correct orientation for the passenger side front. Yes, but different manufacturers do their uh, degas veins differently than others. Some of them have them oriented front to back, some of them have them crossed, some of them have them in nice circling patterns. Uh, there's no as far as that goes, it's more a matter of having the direction of the internal veins is more important than the surface degas veins. So let's go ahead and turn the rotor real quick. We'll explain to you one more time. <clears throat> Jamie, explain the veins a little bit more so they can see from a visual standpoint right here. It looks like when they're oriented in the proper direction, it looks like they are backwards, but the internal veins are actually um, from the inside up to help pull the air through as the rotor spins. Uh, this is the proper orientation. This is how they are designed to work to pull air through. That's about it. Yep, that's about it. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> what they're made to do. They stop. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment below and stay tuned because we will be testing out this combination on a Black Mach 1 here soon in the near future at the firm. And go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.